So I picked up this bike. Um, yeah, it was a little bit further than usual, but I think it was worth it. So I ended up making the drive and I'm pretty stoked with what I got. Um, so yeah, the first thing just kind of notice, you can see this is uh, labeled as a shoot, but I don't think shoot ever came in this colorway. So I was just looking at the, um, looking at the online catalogs and I noticed the roast was in the, in the same colorway. So I actually think it's a roast that's been mislabeled. But um, if you look at the, uh, the paintwork, it's actually like super legit. Uh, really nice finish, like a factory finish. So it must've just got relabeled. So yeah, I don't think it was someone that re-decaled it themselves. It's just a mislabel from the factory, which is pretty rare. Um, yeah, so let's start with the components. Let's go from the top. So it came with these as a Sonic uh, PDW double wall bars. Pretty cool looking. And then it comes with the matching stem as well. So it's uh, 28.6, a little bit thicker. So they went a little bit thicker when everyone was still running uh, thinner handlebars. So a little bit of head in the times, I guess. And then you got this uh, little amoeba stem lock here. Basically, there's like a bolt that goes all the way through the headset. And then, and if you can see it, there's a clamp oh, at the bottom. Clamps it nice and tight. So yeah, so your stem's not gonna fall off. Uh, so yeah, XT, 8-speed XT, pretty cool. Um, here you got these Moab grips, still pretty soft. Um, it's kind of funny that it's sectioned off here. Maybe it's for, it was for a uh, grip shift, but yeah, I don't know. And then down here, this is kind of like the reason why I bought it because um, of these Marzocchi Bombers, Z1s. Um, these are like super hard to find as is and I've always kind of wanted them. So when I saw them, kind of snapped it up. Also the Chris King headset as well. Pretty nice parts on here. Um, XT V-brakes, pretty good condition as well. Uh, XT hubs, lace to Atom Lab rims. So yeah, these are pretty fat. And then um, these are Tioga downhill tires, uh, 2.3s. And then just moving along here, you can see, put some stickers on here. I'll probably get rid of those stickers first. Um, but yeah, this is pretty 90s, I reckon. <laughs> um, kind of clump. 7,005 aluminum. And then these uh, Trivanti Hustle Felt Cranks, Isis Drive, Isis Bottom Bracket. Um, yeah, pretty good condition. You can see some rust here and a lot of rust in between. And here, XT, nine speed, uh, nine speed ReD, but I'm using it as an eight, eight speed here. Eight speed cassette, cassette's pretty good condition. Um, you can see, yeah, these Tioga factory downhill tires. And then, yeah, just matching rims, which is pretty good. Matching rims, matching hubs. Even got the skewers on here. XT skewers. And also on the front, there's another one. Um, and then, same XT brakes on the back here as well. Oh zoom action um, here you got this De Bomb saddle it's starting to come off a little bit and then there's a ton of rust here so I probably replaced that and then um, this kind of no name seat post looks a little bit funky with this gap um, but yeah that's pretty, basically it I think it's a pretty good pickup oh yeah it's going to show this lever so yeah, I just converted it. If you ever had it, converted it to a one by eight. Um, but yeah, I think overall pretty good condition, pretty good pickup, pretty stoked with this. I think it's a good size as well for me. Um, it's gonna be th fun to throw, throw around. Um, also came with Primo pedals. I took those off, um, sent them to my friend. 
The story behind this one was the guy said he basically had a GT Zaska, but then he switched out all the parts um, to this Kona and he wasn't really riding old bikes anymore so he was kind of just selling it. But yeah, I think it's a pretty good setup, pretty good pickup. Uh, one thing I want to mention, I, I saw this in the photos and I thought it was like a dent, but I think it's how it's made because if you look at the other side, yeah, there's like another dent there. Maybe it's for where the pedal goes. I don't know. Pedal clearance seems weird, but um, yeah, you can see it. You can see it on both sides. All right, so the plan for this bike is if you see my Kona stuff, I'm basically going to take all the parts off that and put on this, make this a single speed jump bike. Um, I'm gonna keep the forks on, gonna give them a service. I'm gonna change the tires out. I think the tires are probably too big for what I need. I'll keep the wheels on here. I'm gonna change this to a single speed. So these are coming off. I'm gonna replace the seat post and the seat, change up the handlebars, take up all the levers. And yeah, it should be, a, should be a pretty fun bike. All right, so taking the bike apart. Um, yeah, the first thing I wanted to do was just get on the stand, make things a little bit easier. You can see the steep post here was pretty stuck. So I just used a little bit of WD-40 just to kind of loosen it a little bit. And then that, yeah, that worked fine. Uh, when I was talking to the guy, he said he basically got it serviced like three months ago and then rode it once and then it just kind of sat in his garage. So every, everything came off pretty easy. I'm just taking off all the cables here. Um, there's some rust in some spots, but you can see basically, yeah, there was no problems in taking the stuff off. Just undoing the, the stem here and you can see these uh, azonic uh, double wall bars. Um, some stem caps have these little, uh, little rubber top caps, you can just kind of use your finger now to get them off. And then here, just undoing the amoeba headlock, you can see the bolt goes all the way down, goes all the way through, and has like a little anchor on the end to keep all, all your stuff together. And I noticed on, the, on this, there was kind of these little bug things, so it wasn't taking any risk, but I basically sprayed um, bug spray in there, but you can see it's pretty clean. Yeah, I don't think, uh, I think in Australia you got to be careful of bugs, but I uh, end up being okay. And I just, yeah, just spray some WD-40 in there, just clean it, pushed it through with the same rod. Here's a little bit of WD-40 on the bolt, so I find that helps as well. And then here, um, I could see why the kind of stem lock was used, um, because you can see how the stem doesn't go all the way onto the steerer. So yeah, must have used that amoeba headlock thing just to give it a little bit more uh, security. Here, just taking the brakes off once again. Yeah, no problems here. Everything was in really good condition. Um, came up real easy. Taking off the wheel, taking off the, the forks here. Um, there's a little yeah top cap for this Kiss, uh, Chris King headset, so you just make sure you take that off so it doesn't like fly off somewhere. And then here, just taking off the, the XT brakes. Um, here, taking off the chain. I like to find the the bolt where it is, where the pin was uh, kind of put on, and then I just use the use my uh, my chain breaker tool. I swear I'm going to get a new one soon, <laughs> but yeah, this came off no problem as well. Um, yeah, just kind of undo it. Don't undo it all the way so the pin pops out. Have the pin still um, stuck on one end just in case you need it for some reason. And then yeah, just slide it out. I just put on a little tray. Um, here, taking off the rear D. Pretty straightforward, just undo it. Rear wheel, just undo it. Um, here taking off the cranks. So yeah, this is the the first real problem I have. Basically, I, when I was taking off this bolt, the non-drive side was pretty easy, but then the drive side was like super, super hard, super stuck on. I couldn't get um, in love, 
enough leverage, so I soaked it with a little bit of WD-40, came back to it, um, still couldn't get it off, so I decided to use like an old handlebar and put on an Allen key just to use it as a breaker bar. And yeah, it took a bit of effort, but um, eventually it came off. Yeah, just like that. Um, but yeah, it's funny because like the bolt had like grease and stuff on it. So I was, I was unsure why. And then, yeah, when taking the bolts out, just be careful. There's like a little wash in there as well. You got to take that out before you remove the cranks. Um, and I just use a plastic tire lever to kind of like get that out. Um, here taking off the ISIS uh, crank. So this this is a tool I have and basically um, it takes off the normal square taper and what you need to do is kind of like flip it, flip the end of that tool around so it's a bit wider. Um, you can see though this Allen bit is kind of stuck in the tool because uh, I think I must have used it too much or it pressed down on the metal. So I decided just to flip it around like this and then just put it on. Just make sure it's in there flush and then use uh, yeah, your crank remover tool, screw it in all the way just by hand. And then um, yeah, what I like to do is just give it a tighten, a little bit of a tighten on the, just to make sure the threads are sitting super flush. And then yeah, you can go ahead and just unwind it slowly and this should pop off. So yeah, no problems there, that was pretty easy. Yeah, the main thing was just working it out how to use the tool I had. See, I just had to kind of let that sit in there. The grease actually helped stuck it on. And then here, just yeah, just same with the drive side. Um, I realized I need to take the chain guard off, so Remove the top, and then I started doing it. I was like, oh, I've got to remove the bottom as well. So yeah, just make sure to move those out of the way, and then it's uh, basically the same, same method. It came off pretty easy. And here, just taking off this chain guard, um, just undoes it by Allen key. And then here, uh, this isn't actually an ISIS uh, lock ring. You you're meant to use an eight notch tool, but I just use my. Uh, Got what this tool is called, like a lock ring tool. But yeah, I tried using the other side, but the other side was too tight, so I ended up having to um, get one of those tools. I figured I may as well get it since I work on so many bikes. So um, yeah, I just left it in for now. That's kind of in the mail, so I'll wait for that to come. I can show you guys in the next video. And then here, just taking off the, the seat post, seat clamp straightforward and then here just give it a clean using the soap detergent mix to spray it spray it down like honestly the frame was pretty clean pretty good condition so there wasn't too much to do um, but yeah just gave it a once over gave it a nice clean used WD-40 on the hard stains and then took off some of the stickers that were easy to take off and then here just taking off the hard stickers you gotta just put on um, the hairdryer on hot for maybe 30 seconds and depending on the material of the sticker it should come off pretty easily and then yeah I just used WD-40 again to clean off the residue and the same here with the, the beer is best sticker <laughs> pretty uh, pretty easy wasn't too much to it yeah sometimes you can just rub the WD-40 in um, so yeah, they have it. I have all the parts off. Everything's kind of pulled off. All the wheels are off. Um, here's the frame, looking pretty, pretty good. I think pretty shiny. Um, I think it's scrubbed up real nice. So yeah, the frame's looking pretty good. And next thing to do is the forks. All right, so servicing these forks. Um, yeah, I just gave it a quick wipe down. Just make sure all the dirt and debris was kind of off it. Um, because I don't want it going to uh, any areas where I don't want it to. And then here I'm just taking off the the Allen, uh, the Allen bolts off the front, front brace. Uh, it was really yeah, super hard and I decided to play on a safe side and just put WD, some WD-40 in there because I didn't want to round out the, the bolts. Um, just because yeah, if you round it out, 
it's uh, a little bit of a problem because you got you got to probably drill it out, and I don't I don't have a drill, so I don't want to go through that hassle. So just took it slow here. Um, try to put you know pressure on there. Let the WD40 soak a little bit. Uh, so yeah, just when you're doing it, just make sure you put um, a lot of downward force on it, so your Allen key doesn't kind of slip and ran out the bolt. But yeah, one side ended up coming undone pretty easily after I put the WD-40 in, so those two came out. And on this side, it was like super, super tough. So I ended up getting my uh, ratchet uh, so I can put more downward pressure on the bolt while I turned. And you can see yeah, it's super, super tight, but eventually it loosened. And once it loosened, yeah, you just take your time and unwind it. Um, I think someone, you know, must have put Loctite in there and the Loctite must have seized up real good. Um, but eventually I got it off, so I was pretty happy about that. And then, yeah, just giving it, giving it a, a wipe down. Um, just, yeah, once again, wipe off all the dirt because uh, you're going to be cleaning it anyway, so you might as well just wipe it off now. And then here, taking off these side bolts. Yeah, these ended up being pretty easy. Um, these are actually <laughs> way looser than I thought they should be, but yeah, they ended up coming out. A little bit of rust on the bolts there. Here, just taking off this little uh, ring, this lock ring, or I, I don't know what you call it, but basically it holds the, holds the bolt in there just to be safe. Let me just take that off with the screwdriver. And then to take the stanchion out, I basically use a plastic tire lever and wedge it in between uh, the gap. And yeah, eventually it came out pretty easy. Um, same thing on the other side. These bolts came off no problem. And yeah, you can try and just pull it off, pull the stanchion out, but usually you need um, some kind of lever just to loosen it a little bit. And yeah. That's done. So I'm going to try to clean up the crown a little bit as well. Um, just a little bit dirty. There's a little bit of um, wear and tear on the top, but I'll clean that in a bit. And then here, just wiping down the stanchions, just wiping all the dirt off it, basically. And I'm going to take it apart. So on this blue adjuster, there's a little Allen key bolt that you just got to unscrew. Un um, unloosen a little bit and then um, yeah it just pops off like that and then there's um, a little lock another lock ring in there oh, so what I did here I basically unwound anti-clockwise all the pressure from the from the uh, from the fork because I didn't want to have that kind of springing up when I when I undid the top, so I end up doing that first, and then taking off the lock ring, um, the lock little lock ring thing. It's just you use a little uh, screwdriver again just to pop it off, and then here just using a big shifter, um, you got to hold a stanchion and just turn it, and this came off pretty easy as well. This wasn't on super tight. I don't think it needs to be on super super tight, so yeah, that's good. And here yeah, I just pulled off the the top cap and the next thing all this oil is going to come out so you just got to be careful when you're, you're pulling off the top cap make sure you have a, a tray or a bucket ready um, but yeah you can see all the oil coming out here basically basically black oil so it's pretty dirty so it's good that I'm giving it a service and then you can um, you can kind of slide down the stanchion as well and then once you do that you can see that um, actually more more oil is going to come out and then unscrewing this top bolt there's a top bolt and then there's a plastic washer so just make sure you hang on to those two when you take out your parts just make sure you take them out in order so you know um, you can also find manuals online, so I had reference of a of this uh, BAMZ one, just just in case something went wrong and I didn't know what was what. 
but yeah, so what you'd have to do here, you have to pump out this, uh, the unit cartridge a little bit because more oil is going to come out from there. You can actually see um, in the bottom frame all the oil leaking out. So that's why I have that tray. And I basically just did the same thing with the other fork. Try and get as much oil as you can out before you clean it. Um, yeah, and when you pump the stanchion uh, or pump that cartridge, more oil is going to come out. So just be careful when you're doing that. Uh, make sure you have a newspaper down or whatever or the surface that you can easily clean. And that will help. And then here you're just taking um, stanchions out now in the cartridge. So you just need a little uh, wrench tool with, um, with a little extender. The extender is not that long, um, but yeah, this ended up, took a little bit of force, but ended up coming off pretty easily. These bolts at the bottom as well, they don't need to be done um, super, super tight because I've heard people actually uh, snap them before, snap those small bolts. So just, yeah, just be careful when you're uh, doing them up or undoing them. And then here, once that's loosened, you can take out the cartridge, you can take out the stanchion. Um, you can see it's pretty dirty inside here, so I'm going to give that a clean as well. Um, same with the other leg, just pop it off. Yeah, just be careful when you're taking the stanchion and the cartridge, more oil is going to come out eventually. It gets, gets a little bit messy, but um, yeah, just, if you're prepared, then it's fine. Um, here, yeah, just make sure you recycle your oil or dispose of it properly. Um, you always see those old ads with the seagulls and they, you know, they're drenched in oil, so you don't want that to happen. And then here, yeah, there's a little hole on the end of the cartridge. So when you pump, pump the stanchion, uh, pump the cartridge, you can see all this oil coming out. So yeah, make sure you're aware of that when you're doing it. Cause if you, you know, if you just pump it and you're walking over carpet or something, it could be a, <laughs> it could be a problem. Okay, so next thing, I want to clean uh, clean these seals a little bit. So I just used a uh, cotton bud, got rid of all the dirt. Um, Use a little bit of paper, paper towel as well. You can see it's way cleaner now. So that's going to help the stanchion um, slide way smoother. And then I just gave the outside a quick clean, just using that mild detergent and soap mixed with water spray. Um, a little bit of WD-40 on the crown there. Make sure you don't use WD-40 and start inside the legs because you don't want it to deteriorate. Um, but yeah, I just used it on the crown because I know I can wipe it off. And then here, cleaning the brace. That cleaned up pretty well. Give it a wash as well underwater. Um, but yeah, these are looking pretty good. So the legs are clean and the crown is clean. Um, pretty happy with that. I did use a little bit of tea cut on the crown to get rid of some of the watermarks. Um, but yeah, I, I decided not to go too crazy with that. You can always repolish it as well if you want to. Um, and in here, just all these bolts that I've taken off the, the forks, I'm just going to use a vapor rust just to have them uh, coming out fresh. And then I'm going to give these uh, give, give these caps a quick brush up. Once again, just using the detergent spray, using uh, a little wire brush just to brush off all the debris, uh, or just the yeah the caked on stuff. But yeah, they came out pretty clean. And then here, what we're going to do is put the Put everything back together, everything's going to clean, rinse them out. Um, I use uh, Slicoleum silicon grease, so I think you can use any other silicon grease. Um, just make sure it's a grease that's not going to wear down your your uh, your bushings. And then here, just uh, <laughs> by bushings, I mean seals. Um, so here, yeah, just Put a little grease, uh, silicon grease on the inside of the seals and then on the outside of the stanchion and this will help you get the stanchion back in. Um, just take it slow again. 
And then, yeah, I like to wear gloves so you don't get your hand oils on the stanchion as well. But yeah, you just basically just push push it back in, and it should be should be sweet. And then, yeah, just the same thing with the other leg. Uh, use silicon grease to uh, help it in, and then here put silicon grease on the on these little O rings because this is going to help um, keep them uh, keep the quality of them, make them last a little bit longer, and also stop any uh, oil from leaking out. And then here you got to put that little spring in first, and then drop the cartridge in. And then here what I like to do is put the bolt. Uh, or the nut in the in the tool first and then you kind of have to hold the stanchion so it doesn't move and hold the cartridge um, it's a little bit tricky but then once you start once it starts going on the thread you can kind of just wind it up and it should be fine and again um, do these tie make sure you match the ma manual um, of how many Newton meters it is but it should be tight but not super tight and in here, I'm going to put the oil back in the, the fork, some fresh oil. So just make sure you put a tray down in case it drips. Um, just using the liquid molly motorbike oil, 7.5 weight. And here, a little Allen key with a little tab so I know it's uh, 50 millimeters from the top. And you basically just pour the oil in. And as you pour the oil, oil in, make sure you pump that cartridge because oil is going to go in there. So you just want to pump it till there's no bubbles. And then I sometimes use a little flashlight just to check that, um, how much oil I've put in. But yeah, basically you just fill it up. Make sure it's uh, 50, 50 millimeters from the top. Make sure there's no bubbles when you're pushing up and down that cartridge. And that should be sweet. And then that next thing you got to do is just drop the spring over the top. Put the plastic washer on and then the little silver one. Um, basically you're putting everything back in order now. It's not too much to it really at this point. Um, just make sure you use silicon grease on all the O-rings and all the seals. Um, this will help it, help protect it. And then yeah, it kind of, this kind of just sits on and you slide the extension up with your hand and then uh, screw the cap on. Yeah, and once again, just make sure you use the manual and match, match the pressure um, this doesn't have to be super tight once again, but just tighten um, just pretty snug. You can match the, the right Newton meters here. Of course, you don't want it so loose that any oil is going to come out, of course, but um, yeah, you'll get a good, good feel for it once you start doing it. Um, but yeah, just using a shifter here. No special tools. And then, yeah, just wipe in the excess silicon grease. Um, do the same thing on the other leg. Speed up here, not too much uh, to it. Same process. Don't forget to put this little lock ring back on the top there. Goes underneath the little bolt at the top. And then here, um, the bolt's been in the vapor rust for 24 hours, so going to give these a, a wash and a quick scrub up, protect them with WD-40 a little bit. Um, you can see I just use a wire brush on some of the bolt ends so um, have them all looking consistent. And then here you put a little bit of silicon grease on the top of stanchion before you put it into the crown. And then yeah, just bolt everything up, make sure you alter, alter, uh, alternate your bolts when you're tightening them, make sure everything's in there kind of loose first and at the end tighten them all up, make sure everything fits and yeah that's basically it. It's pretty stoked on that. Um, you can see it turned out super fresh, super happy with how these forks turned out. Can't wait to, uh, can't wait to ride them. And then here um, you'll hear a little popping noise when I first press them down but that's just the bubble wrap but you can see like how smooth they are. But yeah, yeah, super happy with them. All right, so just taking everything off uh, the old Kona here, the Kona stuff. Uh, no problems here, just because I built it pretty recently, so everything came off pretty well. 
and I'm going to put all the parts on the kind of shoe. And then here I just want to show you the two frames up side by side. Um, so the stuff is a medium and the shoe is small I think. But yeah, basically head tube is the same angle, seat tube same angle, chain stay is the same length and the only difference really is the, the top tube length and then you can also see the other seat stay on the stuff is a little bit higher. Next thing here, just changing out the tires. Um, yeah, the, the Tioga downhill tires were a little bit, uh, the tread was a little bit aggressive for me. I don't really do too much crazy downhill riding, so I decided to take them off. Um, they look pretty cool, but yeah, I'll probably, um, if I end up needing more tread, I'll put them back on. But at the moment, these other Vittorias um, are doing real good. Yeah, I also thought about maybe of putting a, like a street tire on this bike as well, like a DTH. Um, but yeah, we'll see how we go with uh, these Victorias. They've been pretty good for me since I've been riding them on the stuff. Um, but here, yeah, you can see <laughs> it took a bit of work, but I switched it, uh, switched it all out. All right, so I had a little uh, stem, a short steerer issue with my build, and I had a little bit of a, a discussion on my Instagram. But basically, I was going to run these Sonic bars with the Sonic stem but I decided to go with uh, the Thompson anyway um, just because the stack's a little bit shorter and how I was running it before I did have a little gap at the top uh, this is not ideal of course but um, if your bolt is under the top of the steerer it should generally be okay um, I also still have a Domeva headlock going through the entire head tube and stem so that should help as well yeah, the headlock should compress the everything down a little bit so you get a, a few more millimeters. So I'll probably run this as it is till I get a new stem or something. Next thing, just uh, switching out the cassette with the single sweep cog. Um, pretty straightforward here, just use a, a chain whip and a wrench just to get that off. And then, yeah, it just turns anti clockwise. Not too much to it actually. Um, and then when you're taking off, I just make sure you know all the spaces and cog are in the right order. And then the cassette, yeah, usually I just put a, a zip tie um, with the loose cassette so you don't lose, uh, lose any cogs. But yeah, after that was done, that's uh, that was pretty solid. And then switching out the rotor on the rear wheel. I'm just going to run the rear brake on this one. Um, but yeah, it's just six bolts. That's what it looks like. All right, and a little bit of last uh, vapor rust action. Clean, clean some bolts up, stem bolts, seat post bolt, um, some other random bolts. But yeah, that's it. And we're ready to build. All right, first thing. Decided to get this cup off just because I've been waiting for this 8 notch tool for forever. So it finally came. So, yeah, basically, it just slots in and then you use uh, a shifter or a wrench and you just undo it. Just make sure you're turning it the right way and it should come off pretty easily. And then, yeah, just unscrew it by hand. Here, just loading up the BB with uh, BB threads with grease. Just make sure they're clean first before you put some grease in. Um, this will stop it from seizing up and then just these cups I just yeah I kind of just use my hand just to screw it in there first um, just so it kind of grabs the thread make sure it's straight and then here just the same on the other side grease it up and then just yeah just hand tighten it and then what you need for the Holotech BB is another tool um, this tool kind of grabs onto the side of the teeth and yeah, just tighten up by hand first and then just use a wrench and then make it make sure it's fully tight and then putting the crank arm in, not too much to it here, a little bit of grease um, you can just slot it through um, sometimes you need to use a, a mallet to kind of hit it on the end but um, yeah, mine went through pretty easily see just like that 
put the other arm on, make sure, yeah, make sure it's straight, otherwise you're going to have problems. Yeah, that's looking good. And then what you want to do next is put the compression cap on. So on my tool, there is a, a tool within on the inside where you can use it to kind of tighten it. But this really just needs to be finger tight. Um, you just basically you're just pressing it so your crank arms sit flush together and there's still kind of nice movement. Um, you don't have to do it up super tight. And then just when you put the bolts on, make sure that little plastic tab is down and yeah, just screw it in alternatively, one on each side. Um, yeah, just be careful here. Just make sure you're doing that properly. And then yeah, that's it. That's it for the cranks. Next up is the seat post or seat clamp. So I like to put a little bit of grease um, on it, on the inside and on the outside a little bit just to help it. Um, you might not have to put it on the outside, but my seat clamp is super tight. So I use that plastic tire lever again, just put it in between, take the bolt out, put it in between, and then you just pull it apart and push it on. And that should go on pretty easily. Put the bolt back in. I ended up here putting the seat post in as well. Um, don't forget to grease up your seat post, just so I can uh, put it on the bike, the bike rack or bike stand. Um, so I can work on it so not all the pressure is on the aluminum frame. And then here just greasing up the the um, the bearings on on the headset. I don't know if you need to put uh, grease here because they're sealed bearings, but yeah, I just put some anyway just to maybe protect it from water. And then, yeah, just slide it on. Don't forget to grease up the fork crown a little bit. Fork race, crown race. And yeah, you just put on the top, slides down. Here you want to clean off all the grease before you put the, the stem on so it doesn't um, slip or anything. Um, but yeah, basically just put it in here. You can see me putting that long bolt with the headlock on. Um, I would say also make sure when you're doing this have all your parts re yeah, at reachable distance. Otherwise, it could be a little bit of a pain. Um, but yeah, basically tighten it up, make sure it's tight, but it still spins freely. And then, yeah, that's basically it. Tighten up your stem bolts. Um, here, just putting on the wheels. Tighten up your stem bolts again. Um, yeah, not too much to it. Uh, I like to put the wheels on now, because sometimes if I put the bike down, I can take it off the stand and work on it that way as well. Um, and then here, just putting on the back brake. Um, I already have an adapter, so I end up putting that on. But you can see when I put the brake on, I put the wheel in, it's rubbing on the disc. So what you do to fix that is you just loosen these two bolts here. Um, so the caliper can move a little bit. And then once those are fully loose, what you do is you spin the wheel and then um, press on your front brake or press on your brake, your rear brake and here and then yeah basically tighten your bolts again but then here you can see yeah you can see it's spinning pretty pretty freely tighten your bolts make sure you check your brake make sure it works and that's it here putting on the zip tie I was going to put one here but I don't know it kind of like bends the cable a little bit more than I want it to so I end up just putting a zip tie on the top um, and then yes, just cut it off. You can file it down as well. This is probably it's excessive, but yeah, I did it anyway. And then here, because um, the cable could be hanging loose, I put a little bit of rubber in there just to give it like a clean finish. Here, putting on the grips, uh, these DMR grips, you kind of just slide on, and there's a little lock bolt. And um, you just got to kind of tap them in and tighten the bolts, and that's basically it. So yeah, this derailleur I modified so it acts more as a single, single speed uh, guide and doesn't have like as much chain slap. So yeah, you can take a look at my videos if you're keen on that. And here, um, yeah, so this bike was previously used with V-brakes and left a nasty mark on the rim. So yeah, I couldn't stand looking at that. So I ended up just painting it with black house paint. 
Um, but basically what you do is you just paint, um, try to get it in those grooves there, just make go light with the paint and then use a paper towel and you just wipe it smooth. And you just repeat this process uh, until you do the whole wheel. I kept the paint pretty light on the first coat and I ended up just doing two coats um, where it needed it just to make it smooth. I think you can also use T-Cut over it once again to make it smoother but I kind of just left it as is. I thought it was it turned out pretty well so I was pretty happy with that. And then I just do the other side of the wheel as well. Um, so that one was a bit easier at that time. And last thing I wanted to put a, a chain chain stay protector on here um, but yeah basically cut up an old tube you just wind it up kind of like a tennis racket just overlap it and then just finish it off with a zip tie I went from small to large on mine but yeah I think you can do it the other way and it shouldn't matter and I did mine all the way up to the derailleur so my derailleur wouldn't hit on the chain stay but yeah that's the last thing that's basically it and here's the new build video hope you liked it uh yeah i think this bike turned out super sick super fun to kind of ride around hop around the small frame really helps and yeah just got to work out the balance points still get a little bit more used to the bike but i'm um, looking forward to that um so yeah let me know what you think leave a comment check my store and see you in the next one peace